notes for my cast and scene but uh i used my lego collection that is admittedly quite big my little brothers did help me once or twice we helped guys uh, find the pieces and, like yellow bits for the house and black pieces for black pieces yeah first scene takes place uh with the lush grasslands and farmland around Vesuvius but you're gonna have to imagine them because as you can see it's post eruption and so that brings us to the second scene and this is actually based on a proper Pompeian street front as you can see here's a street with stepping stones here if you notice them in the film stepping stones stepping stones and that was to let the waste water come through um, they've all got balconies with pillars and they've all got square doors that are reasonably the same size. And Art burner here, and they're selling um, rolls of cloth. It's probably the most famous street sign of Pompeii, and it says, Beware of the dog. But these clothes, if you've noticed, are actually made out of old curtain fabric. So here we have the peristelium of the third scene. There's some uh, trees here and some vines and flowers and a small pool in the middle. Even in their gardens they had wall paintings so here and here. I did actually use real wall paintings from Pompeii that were found during the excavations. Many of the gardens in Pompeii were surrounded with open galleries, which I've tried to depict using these pillars. This was based on that and that. These are real Pompeii gardens um, found after the um, excavation. We did actually have some more plinths. But, uh, when we tried to film it, it proved too logistically difficult with too many obstacles for them to walk around. So we had to um, minimalise that to two. Um, in the actual movie, there was a surprise visitor that was only a bit out of place. And it was on this thing. So next time you watch it, see if you can spot him. House of Vericundus, which was an actual cloth merchant in Pompeii. Um, the House of Vericundus was imagined to be one of the more sumptuous uh, houses with rich decoration and um, wall paintings. So here's our compluvium, our sloped roof, and it goes into the impluvium, which has some decoration and um here's a mosaic on the floor which if you noticed was simpler on the other house because that other house wasn't as rich um and uh atriums were designed in a tetra style um way which basically means they have four columns these two doors lead off to the um cubiculum the um atrium is usually it says here in my research blocked off by a wooden door and if you can see it looks a bit black on the video recorder but that is actually a wooden door of Lares was a very important public um, temple that was built to celebrate the when the god Lares saved them from the earthquake but every house had its own small one in its uh, atrium so this is the one that our family has now we come to the big problem of making the volcano erupt, and we're going to have a light plume of ash coming from that volcano and through this hole we pull the plume of ash through this hole so it looks like it's moving so pull a little bit take the picture pull a little bit take the picture i use real ash in my stop motion animation and so this was probably the hardest scene to film and here's the edge of the balcony and there's an, an anonymous house, his roof, uh, and then there's Vesuvius. And um, this is our eruption, which we're going to have like that. And that is the backdrop, which is hanging over some chairs. I had to transport the set to Cornwall. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I record the music for the scenes. 
And I'd actually already done this, but I had feedback that the captions were too quick. So I had to change the length of the captions, therefore changing the required length of the music. I'm recording them all again. I'm going to have to start it a bit before... And that is how we record music. At the beginning, when the volcano's all lush and green, um, it comes to the problem of at the end, when we need it covered in ash and completely barren with no green whatsoever, um, we have to do something about the green. And if we try and rebuild it using all of the black pieces, it will never be quite the same. And so um, I've resorted to colouring it, painting them, using watercolours, which gives them a nice black effect and also makes the ash stick slightly to the watercolour. Okay, now it comes to me showing you the actual stop motion animation sequence. Um, this is the last scene and they're just walking off. So um, you can see our scene of devastation here and our tripod and our camera. And each frame, picture, lasts for 0 0.2 of a second. So you really have to move them just a teeny bit if you want it to look realistic. So, move their leg, put them down. Move their leg, put them down. Make sure it's in focus, take a picture. Yes, that's in focus, right. Next photo. Move them down, like that. And take it. And so, you really have to be careful with this because if one picture isn't out of focus, like that one for instance, I have to do it again and I have to delete it. There, and that one's in focus, onto the next picture. And so, it just carries on like this until the end of the scene. Uh, Mr. Place has sent me an email with the translation for my lament. And um, the reason I'm doing this is I realised how sad it was when I set up all the family and did their little lives. And then I had to end up killing them in the end. And so I decided to do this. About the making of this film, I was always dreading the fact when I, I had to set up these lovely families and then kill them off in the end. And so that's probably why um, uh, I didn't actually show you any of them actually dying. Um, but I got quite sad at the end of it. And so I've dedicated this film to um, all of the people who died on that day.